Hey, thanks for checking out the Solid Verbal. Now would be a great time to subscribe to the channel for college football content all off season long. You talk about what stood out to me at the NFL Combine. Anthony Richardson ran a 4-4-3. He set the all-time record for quarterbacks in both the vertical and broad jump. Clearly, Anthony Richardson at 6'4", 244 is a specimen. Is a specimen Anthony Richardson, of course, out of the University of Florida. He decided to enter the draft early. The NFL looks at this guy. I've read a lot of the scouting reports. They see a potential Cam Newton, Dan. Sure. They, they see Cam Newton. They see the size. They see the strength. They see his athleticism. They can see how he tested at the combine. And like it's all there. The physical tools are there. You look at what he did as a runner at Florida. Big runs, right? Ran for touchdowns this past season of 45, 60, 73, 80, and 81 yards. Just over the past two seasons, excuse me, not just last season. But you get the point. He's got a lot of explosivity in those legs. And clearly, given his frame, he's somebody who you would think could stand up pretty well to the NFL, the the rigor of a 17 game schedule. The weaknesses, I think we'll probably speak to the weaknesses here, but when you look at a guy like Anthony Richardson, obviously you get excited about all the all the the measurables, but as for watching Anthony Richardson as a college player, as for the experience of rooting him on, we both were pretty into Anthony Richardson. What what say you? The best of Anthony Richardson at Florida. So whether that was sort of in relief or as sort of a change up two years ago with Emory Jones and the Dan Mullen system, and then the best of him this past year, year one with Billy Napier, were flashes of being the best quarterback in America. Physically, that arm, the ability to turn a seven yard run into a 91 yard run, the peak of Anthony Richardson, you understand why there are Cam Newton comparisons. But I, I've mentioned this before. I'm most interested in what a quarterback's seventh best throw looks like, 11th best throw looks like, because ultimately that's what wins and loses games, right? The ability to, it was, wasn't a great throw, but it was a 13-yard completion down the field to a tight end up the seam. And so, again, I clearly see what NFL teams see in Anthony Richardson. Sure. But with all of these physical comparisons, all of these just, I mean, what's the, the phrase, Ty? Built different. He's not built similarly. He's built different. Oh, yeah. So you understand the seduction that an NFL scout would feel because of these measurables, because of the best of Anthony Richardson. The concerning thing to me is when you compare somebody to Cam Newton, Cam Newton started one year and was actually excellent all year long. <laughs> When you compare somebody who has that burner speed, like we saw a little, I saw clips of Justin Fields this year, right? He was great with the Bears. He was actually excellent with Ohio State all the time. When you see what Lamar Jackson did, actually excellent. All the time. And so all of the time, all of the friggin' time. That's how you end up in New York all the time for a Heisman ceremony. And so the concerning thing to me is people are going to say, well, Josh Allen had accuracy issues and was really raw when he was at Wyoming. I, I'm always going to see Josh Allen as the exception to the rule. And that was a, a level down. So maybe it's a competition thing. Maybe it's what your teammates are thing. And I understand the the change of coaches, some change in system. You know, they, they had a ton of firepower at receiver and running back. And that obviously kind of fell off a slope this year in terms of where they were with Kadarius Toney and Kyle Pitts, guys like that. But if we're talking about a first-round quarterback, if not a top-five quarterback, is that where he's being discussed, I think? Yeah, I mean, some yes. people have had him as high as one, Dan. One overall. I, th- the experience of being a Florida fan, which I'm not, and watching Anthony Richardson is you are ready for excellence at any given moment, transcendent excellence, or throwing a 147 mile an hour you know slant <laughs> on third and three yeah. to a receiver five yards away and so i i worry that there's a little bit of makes the impossible seem possible and makes the possible seem impossible to anthony richardson yeah. that's that to me is his legacy where he did things that nobody else in the sport could do at that size and yet it's that seventh best throw, ninth best throw, fifteenth best throw that would have me 
pretty heartbroken as a Gator fan, probably. Yeah, well, look, I mean, there, there's a reason they compare him to Cam Newton. There, there's a reason. I get it. Like you said, I understand why NFL people are really into Anthony Richardson. I love the kid. We did a yeah. show last summer, one of the, a Q&A show. Somebody asked us, which player are you most excited to watch in 2023? I said Anthony Richardson. I said he was the guy I was most excited to watch because not only are the measurables off the chart and he's a big specimen and he's a unique talent, but there's no question about the big playability. He is exciting to watch. The best of Anthony Richardson is really freaking exciting. So I get it. Mm -hmm. My problem with him as a draft pick is exactly what you described. It's that at least based on these projections, you are drafting based on the flashes and not so much on the body of work. Right now, if we're talking about right now, He's a much better runner than a passer. I think he knows where to go with the ball when he drops back, but accuracy has been all over the place. Accuracy needs to be fixed. The the scouts say that's mostly a result of footwork. They would know better than me that that can be corrected. I hope for his sake it can, but it's not just the footwork that needs the work. There are a lot of things that need work in the passing game. He can't just drop back and be a runner at the next level. He needs a situation with a good quarterback coach He needs a situation where he can wait on the bench and get some seasoning, not where he's thrown into the fire and expected to lead presumably a bad team right to the playoffs or to a 500 record. He is not Joe Burrow coming into the NFL where he's just ready for it all. Anthony Richardson is an exciting prospect. He's going to need a lot of work. And I hope for his sake, he is given a situation where it's a talented quarterback coach that's willing to help with help with some of these things that clearly he needs work on. Um, I personally. Wow. For as excited as I am about Anthony Richardson as a prospect, and I'm rooting like hell for all of the kids we're going to describe. I'm not rooting against any of these guys openly. I like Anthony yeah. Richardson. If I were drafting, I wouldn't pick him. Not in the first round. It's too big of a risk. I understand where you're coming from. Um, quarterback is everything. As we know, I don't think I would either because he is immediately going to be seen as a savior. And they're going to try whoever it is. I don't know if it's Indy or Houston or whoever ends up taking him. They're going to prefer to sit him for whatever amount of time for him to get comfortable, to get you know acclimated to NFL speed and systems and everything like that. But I just think I I think it's too much pressure on him. And I kind of understand why he turned pro. I'm sure he looked at where Florida's roster is right now and said to himself, I might as well try and get better quicker in the NFL. And I don't know if the transfer market was any sort of possibility, but like, where would he go? Where would he go that he was that there is a an immediate job available that would welcome him with open arms? Probably a lot of schools. But is he immediately going to get better at Alabama? Probably, (laughs) but you weigh the calculus of going back to college. And if he is already seen because of his physical potential as a top five pick, what do you have to prove? You have nothing to prove. You have nothing to gain by going. If you're already there. Yeah. To a different situation where you have to learn the offense. And frankly, you, I think, stand more a chance of devaluing your draft stock. If you, if you make a move like that, he could be the first overall pick and he didn't have to do that. So I root for him, but I think we're both on the same page here. We're saying no. I I would really hesitate unless he got a full year and had that great coach and had the roster around him. And I have no reason to believe that he isn't sort of a great quarterback student and a nerd about the position. You don't get this far in life as a quarterback without, you know, having that aptitude. So I'm, I, I I want to believe, right? The old X Files, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to believe, but you know, there's just a little bit that that worries me, and um, might say more about Florida than anything. Where Florida's at as a program right now, where he's just looking at what's coming back and what isn't there, and saying, you know, no, oh, yeah, it's time.